Hi, everyone. All right, I only have 10 minutes, so I'm going to have to be super quick. Uh, I've done a bunch of AI at places I've worked and studied in the school. So today we're going to talk about uh, the AI concept of perception. This is an image from my Nest Cam. Uh, this was it telling me that the grass was moving. Uh, this is me telling me that the grass is moving at night. Uh, this is telling me that the car drove by. Another car, and at least this one was semi-useful because it told me about a UPS truck. And this one's me going out to take out the trash. Not super useful. At least this one, it found my daughter running outside with me. So I thought, I got a hold of this uh, Amazon Deep Lens. How many of you, has anyone gotten a hold of a Deep Lens? No? One. All right. So they gave them away at, uh, at their conference last year. It's basically a computer with a CPU, a GPU, and a 4 megapixel camera attached to it uh, that streams video, and it runs Debian. And, so, and it runs uh, Amazon Greengrass, which lets you run Lambda on it. So it's pretty cool. Uh, when you set up your camera, it's, it's still definitely not ready for prime time. You kind of have to be a hacker to make it work. You have to start by configuring a whole bunch of IAM roles. Uh, pro tip, use those links that they give you, even if you think you know what you're doing. I thought I knew what I was doing. I ended up breaking it and spending an entire day messing with it, just trying to figure it out. It's extra confusing because it's two of those are labeled as green grass, but one of them is actually a Lambda permission. So if you do get a hold of one. Uh, the next pro tip is uh, when you are setting it up, it'll give you a certificate to download. Make sure you actually save that certificate. Otherwise, you're going to have to do it again. Uh, and then you're going to log into the device itself, and you are going to set it up. So you're going to have to upload those certificates back and set a password. Uh, make sure you remember your password, because if you don't, you're going to end up in here, the grub menu, which I hadn't been in in a long time. Uh, and then I attempted to fix it by logging in as root and following the instructions in their manual, which says to delete opt AWS cam. So if you get one, don't ever do that. Uh, because their instructions are outdated and wrong. So, uh, yeah, if it'll tell you to install that package. That package won't give you all the files back. It took me days to actually get it working. But once I got it working, I was able to start putting projects on there. So it comes with a couple of uh, default uh, models that have been trained already. Object detection, face detection. I figured I'm building a security camera. Let's start with face detection. Uh, so I installed the face detection. And uh, this is what it looks like when you run face detection. Here's me walking up, person walking up, and you can see that nothing at all is happening. Uh, I walked all the way to the door. It never detected my face. Uh, I even came around and walked all the way up to the window, which, of course, nobody would ever do in real life. And you can see how close I had to get before it actually starts detecting my face. So unfortunately, face detection didn't work. So I decided to try object detection instead. And object detect, so this is what a deployment looks like. You can see here it's warning me that I'm replacing face detection with object detection. Uh, and then when it starts, uh, this is the screen you will get. You will see things like the progress. So the models are built in the cloud and then pushed to the device where the inference is done. Uh, and so this is it pushing to the device. Uh, it'll tell you what's being pushed, the current project, face detection. Uh, it'll warn you about always needing an update. It'll always tell you you need an update, no matter what update you're at. It's these things they're hoping to fix by the time they release it for real. Uh, here's some info about your ARNs and things like that, so useful information. And then this is just telling you about uh, the inference, the outputs, and where you can find. So it uses the Amazon IoT system, so it's outputting everything automatically to the IoT system. Uh, so if you've used Amazon's IoT system, you can use that to get all of your information, your inferences. And so here it is with object detection. And you can see that it's doing a much better job now. See, it's, it put a bounding box there. It said person. So obviously, it's working. And here it is again during the day. And you notice that it's doing some other stuff. And I'll tell you about that in one second. Uh, here's my daughter and the nanny coming out. And so you can see it's definitely doing a good job of detecting people. It's detecting other stuff, too. Uh, and this is what the live stream right off of the camera looks like, with the bounding boxes. And what's interesting here is it did, in fact, detect my daughter as a person. Uh, it detected the nanny with the stroller as a horse. <laughs> and the house across the street is a train. So obviously, it still needs a little bit of training. 
to get it right. But it did detect all the persons. And you can see this is the stream, the log stream that's coming off of the camera going to the IoT system. Uh, and, and it did a pretty good job right there. You could see that it had fairly high confidence in a person. It got almost to 90% confidence. But then you can see right after that, TV monitor, 30%, and so on and so forth. Uh, here's the actual code. So this is the code that is the default code from the project, comes from Amazon. It's just called Hello World. Uh, and this is the basic stuff. It grabs the frame, so it's all in Python. It puts the frame into something that you can use. Uh, we have to resize the frame because the model was trained on a 300 by, uh, 320 by 200 image. So we resize it. Uh, this is where it's actually drawing the bounding boxes onto the frame and putting on the labels of what it identified and the percentages. Uh, and then here is the part where it in injects that into the IoT data stream. All I did was add an extra function that says, if you find a person, a cat, or a dog, upload that image to S3. This is what that looks like. It's very basic code. It, bas it really just says, take this image, give it a name of a time and a date, and put it into S3. And so this is the kind of image that I get into S3 with person detection. Uh, so this is the uh, Amazon eco AI ecosystem. And I'm using recognition. So recognition is their image recognition system. Uh, it can do stuff like tell you about people and mountains and rocks. So it's basically a lot more effective at it recognizing things than the on-camera inferences, because it's not doing it in real time. Uh, it can tell you about not safe for work stuff. It can tell you a whole lot about faces, if it gets a good picture of a face. Uh, it can tell you similarity. And this is the functionality that I like the most because this is what I use to train it on. This is what my face, the postman, my daughter, my wife. And so it can use that to identify people coming up to the house. It can also identify certain famous people. So it'll tell me if David Ortiz comes to my house so I can run. Uh, and it's really simple to use. Uh, basically, it's just a trigger on the S3 bucket. So after the camera has detected the image and uploaded it to S3, there's a trigger on the S3 bucket that says run the Lambda file. The Lambda is super simple. It's uh, basically just code that says, uh, you know, go uh, put this into Amazon recognition and tell me if I saw any of your faces that you've trained me on. And then it spits back an alert to me. And so it'll s send the image and it'll say, here's the image that I found a face in. Uh, most of the alerts that I get right now just say, I couldn't identify this face. Can you tell me who it is? And so then I can go in and say, this is the face, you know, this is who this person was, and so on. So it's still mostly just in a training mode right now, where almost every image is unidentified as to who it is. Uh, but it's slowly getting better. And so that's the idea, is eventually it will learn, and it'll be able to be really effective at telling me who's coming to the door, and uh, I can start telling, you know, don't tell me about the postman or do tell me so that I know to go get in the mail or something like that. Uh, I can tell it to ignore my neighbors, anything like that. So that is the deep lens. Like I said, this uh, I'm based on a pre-release product. So it can't, uh, you know, you, you have to pre-order it now and then you get it in, uh, I think it's June or something. Yeah, somewhere in June. Uh, so I have... One minute left for questions. If anyone has any quick questions to ask about anything I've done, yeah. The resolution on the camera is uh, it's a four megapixel, so it's uh, 1080p, uh, 30 frames per second. Uh, yeah, so you resize it down because the model was trained on a small image. So as it gets smarter, it can, uh, th the, the resizing is for the detection of persons and things like that because I'm using their default model. But the image that's actually sent to S3 is the full 1080 4 megapixel image. Yeah, it's super easy to slot in your own models, especially if you know what you're doing. If you're using MXNet, they have uh, APIs already built in to optimize it for the GPU on the device. Yeah, the pre-built models are just there to get people started who don't know or don't want to deal with building the model. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually designed specifically to, to put your own models onto it.
All right, great, perfect timing. Thank you, everybody.